Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. Um, my website is jasonburnspreacher.com. jasonburnspreacher.com. You can also look at my Facebook and Twitter. And uh, on my Twitter, I put a, a lot of apologetic material up. And um, from various other uh, YouTube channels and websites. Uh, and on my Facebook, uh, there's a lot of like Bible teaching that I put up of other preachers like Alistair Begg, etc. Uh, I often put things up for young people, so there's uh, various videos on my Twitter and um, Facebook where I put things for young people from like Living Waters uh, YouTube channel. And also, uh, from time to time, I make comments on my Twitter, so if you want to hear what my thoughts are on current affairs or... Uh, thoughts on theology or apologetics, I will write some clips. Um, there will be uh, a few things released in a few few weeks' time, a couple of papers that I'm writing, um, and uh, also there's a book that I, I've written which uh, I'll probably be uploading uh, and you'll be able to uh, download it uh, on PDF sometime. Maybe in a week or two I'll put that up. Um, but I want to talk about a very important um, topic. Um, but before I do, I've been out today doing evangelism. Um, people have been asking for videos about my street preaching. Um, so I'll be street preaching later on in the week. So I'll be filming that. And uh, you'll be able to see videos of the street preaching. Uh, also, uh, uh, I'll be... Um, on air on a, uh, a well-known radio program uh, will be airing me and uh, I'll give you information on my Twitter if you look at my Twitter in the next few days I'll give you information where you can go and listen to this uh, radio program uh, the radio program that I'll be where I was interviewed uh, has over a million views uh, a million listeners so uh, I'll, I'll give information on my Twitter if people want to find out where the interview is and so that you can listen to it. Um, I want to talk about um, free speech uh, for a few minutes and um, and it is basically this is in the Daily Mail um, it is basically Oxford College bands Christian Union from Freshers Fair and I'm going to read some of it. This article was also not only did the Daily Mail cover it but it was also covered in The Guardian and somebody uh, one of my viewers uh, sent me a link to The Guardian I read The Guardian article <coughs> and I've had this passed on to me today um, by a friend concerning the Daily Mail so it's Oxford College bans Christian Union from Fascist Fair. So I'm going to read what happened and then I'm going to give you my thoughts. I've also got a clip here. and uh, It says Oxford students. This is by uh, Eleanor Harding, Larissa Brown and Scott Campbell of the Daily Mail. Daily Mail, Tuesday, October the 10th, 2017, so to give them credit. Oxford students banned the Christian Union from the College Refreshers Fair by claiming the religion was an excuse of homophobia and near-colonialism. The event at Balalio ba College was laid on to welcome new undergraduates with student societies and clubs invited to promote themselves, but organisers told the College Christian Society its presence would risk potential for harm to refreshers. The event went ahead with no representatives from the Christian Union, which is found at most universities. The move was yesterday condemned by MPs, academics, church leaders, who said it was a violation of students' right to practice their chosen religion. The Reverend Nigel Genders, the Church of England's Chief Education Officer, said freedom of religion and belief is a fundamental principle that underpins our country and its great institutions and universities. 
To exclude the CU in this way is to misunderstand the nature of debate and dialogue and at odds with the kind of society we are all seeking to promote. End of quote. The, the fair was organised by Belelio's Junior Common Room, a committee of students nominated to represent the interests of the undergraduates. Emails leaked to student newspaper chair will show JCR Vice President Freddie Potts rejected the Christian Union's request to attend. He said, we'd like to keep the Freshers' Fair secular. We also had concerns raised that one specific faith being predominant might will prove alienated to people who come from and align with non-Christian religions and spiritualities. The CU said it supported inclusivity and that denying Christian students the chance to find out about the union was unfair. Mr Potts then offered to allow a multi-faith stall but said it would be unstaffed as, to, as too strong a Christian presence would amount to a macro, micro aggression. He said Christianity's influence on many marginalised communities has been damaging in its methods of conversion and rules of practice and is still used in many places an excuse for homophobia and certain forms of neo-colonialism. In a backlash, students this week passed a motion branding the step a violation of free speech and a violation of religious freedom. They barred the GCR from stopping religious societies attending fresh affairs. And Tory backbencher Jacobs Ree Mogg, who is an Oxford graduate, condemned the ban yesterday. He said universities ought to rel relish free speech and the exploration of ideas is that they exist for Tory MP Gary Streeter Chairman of Christians in Parliament said, This is wrong on so many levels. The majority of us completely embrace people from all backgrounds and types. It is a classic secular approach to, toler to, to tolerate everything apart from faith. Simon Calvert of the Christian Institute asked how the student leaders were allowed to abuse their power in this way. Frank Ferredi, Emeritus Professor of Sociology at Kent University, said the census approach was extremely sad. While Alan Smith, as Professor of Education at Buckingham University, said he was deeply concerned by the ugly smears used to block Christians, Belelio's move follows attempts by Oxford students to ban offensive speakers, fancy dress or costumes and even historical figures. Students uh, tried to have an Oriel College statue of Imperial Cecil Rhodes pulled down because of his colonial links. Belelio said it was pleased that the students had resolved the issue themselves and Mr Potts, who attended Emmanuel College in Gateshead, was on Belelio's winning university challenge team this year. The 20-year-old could not be contacted last night. So, a few more uh, bits of information. Leftist is a little snippet. Leftist Belio and its roll call radicals, though its almanac includes two conservative prime ministers, Belio has long been known as one of Oxford's most left wing colleges. In the 1960s and 1970s, it was run by Marxist historian Christopher Hill and Sumas Milne, Jeremy Corbyn's spin doctor, is said to have commented, uh, have cemented his far left views while reading. Politi politics, philosophy and economics there. When former students Boris Johnson returned this year, the Foreign Secretary was met by protests as students branded him racist. As well as Harold Macmillan and Sir Edward Heath, Berlioz has produced another Prime Minister, Liberal Her Herbert Asquith. And then another piece of information, um, an illiberal education. Uh, for generations, universities have been bastions of tolerance and free speech, where conflicting ideas and ideologies could be fought over in the relentless pursuit of truth and knowledge. But today, instead of encouraging unfettered debate, student bodies across the country are increasingly trying to close it off, banning speakers and organisations that fail to adhere to the politically correct uh, groupthink. The latest example and one of the most absurd is the decision by student representatives at Balliol College, Oxford, to ban the Christian Union from their freshest fair on the grounds that Christianity is an excuse for homophobia 
and neo-colonialism. What a ludicrous slur. Christianity is by far the largest of all religions, with 2.2 billion adherents, around a quarter of the world's population. Do the students, thought police, believe they're all homophobic neo-colonialists? And what are Balliol's own proud contribution to the development of Christian civilization? John Wycliffe, the first to translate the Bible into English, was a master, while seven archbishops of Canterbury were Almanai. Are they also now to be regarded as bigots? It's simply ridiculous and usually disrespectful. But the real tragedy, tragedy is that by trying to insulate young people from anything that might upset them, these self-appointed moral guardians are doing them no favours. Heaven help these sensitive souls when they leave the sequestered veil of academia and have to cope with the harsh realities of life in the outside world. They will wish they had been better prepared. I want to talk a about uh, quite a few things really uh, concerning this. Um, I uh, I've always been a, a bastion of free speech. I've always defended free speech. Um, I might not agree with you, but I, I will defend to the death your freedom to free speech. And I find it very um, disconcerting and troubling that in a so-called democracy, um, that freedom of speech has been eroded. And it's a very sad state of affairs because what that means is uh, Western civilization is basically crumbling before our very eyes. I met an 80-year-old man today in Cheatham Hill and I got talking to him and I asked him of opinion about the times that we live in and he said, and I quote, he said, and he, he, he was not a Christian, but he said that the West is crumbling. And that's what we're seeing today. This is a part of a wider malaise of, of the Western civilization where our Western, Western politicians and academics uh, and leaders really have lost lost all sense of reality and all sense of rationality and these students are just uh, part of the wider symptom in the culture not only in in England not only in Britain but in the whole of the Western Hemisphere and so the reason for this video is in the hope that in the midst of this collapse of Western civilization there might be one or two people who might awaken out of their slumbers and begin to reassert the defence of free speech. And I think that's what we need at this present time. I have always defended free speech. It's cost me dearly to do so. Um, in the early days when I was on the internet, um, when I was challenging uh, militant atheism, it was not that I had anything against atheism. What incensed me and what upset me is the online bullying of people who, who really were stopping the freedom of speech. And um, my standing up for the freedom of speech on the internet cost me dearly. It cost me a lot of pain, a lot of aggravation. But I'm very passionate about it. But if it was to stand up for free speech, we were to do it in a, in a right way, in a rational way, not in an emotional way. And we were to do it with dialogue and argument and discussion. And it seems to me that there is a, a tremendous need at this present time for everybody, whichever, whichever uh, spectrum that you belong to, to make a reasserted effort to defend uh, freedom of speech. Now, as the West has thrown away the foundation of Judo Christianity, in the midst of that throwing away, it has been filled with various ideologies and uh, various uh, narratives 
like postmodernism, like we see here, uh, leftist Marxist, political correctness, all the rest of it. And these narratives, uh, in the end, when you throw out God in a state, when you throw out the Judeo-Christian position, inevitably those who fill the gap, they literally become the gods. And they begin to um, enforce the party line. And they enforce it without dialogue, without argument and reason, but by brute force. Just as these uh, Oxford students have done. There was no dialogue, there was no debate. Uh, basically, they, they accused the, the student union of certain things and, and they made the decision and that was it. And that is what you find in this modern age. You find that there are these town councillors, politicians, media people who set themselves up as the moral guardians with the political correct ideology and they enforce it with ridicule, they enforce it uh, with bullying, they enforce it with emotion. In other words, they, they often will claim that they are the victims in order to get their way. But they are supremely unable to argue and defend their position through debate and logic and reason. And this is what we're seeing at the present time. So, if Western civilization is going to recover from the malaise that she has fallen into, and come out of the collapse that she's into, we will need a, a spiritual revival of the Bible and of the Gospel. But we also need a political revival where our political leaders gain their sense and also the intellectuals uh, of the West gain their reason and sense. History repeats itself. This might seem an isolated incident, but actually this is, has been repeated throughout history. What we see here is a student body, a leftist student body, demonize the Christians and try to ostracize them from society. The next step from demonizing a group and ostracizing that group from public space is then to enact violence or en enact violence upon them. That is exactly what Chairman Mao did at the time of the Cultural Revolution. They began to demonize the Christians, then they pushed them out of public space, and then the violence set in. That's what this happened under Stalin. They demonized the Christians, pushed them out of public space, and then the next step of violence. This incident at Oxford, if it continues to be repeated throughout other universities, what we are witnessing is a Marxist cultural style revolution, where Christianity is not only being demonized verbally, but is forcibly being pushed out of public space. And then the next step will be physical violence upon Christians. It is a dangerous precedent. It is a serious uh, precedent. And the action that Daily Mail have done by producing the article and the article that has been done by The Guardian and the various politicians and academics that have made comments here in no way, in no way deals with the severity 
the seriousness and the implication for Western democracy and Christianity in the West. This is a serious tipping point in our Western culture today. And I would say that if politicians and academics and intellectuals, if you fail to realize the need to defend free speech, if you fail to realize the Christian cultural heritage of this nation, as well as the multicultural heritage, but also if you fail to realize the Christian heritage and not protect that heritage, then the deterioration in our society is going to continue to be rapid. We are already in a crisis in the Navy because of political correctness and all the issues that it's created. We're already in a crisis concerning censorship and um, in terms of um, the media and um, free speech. We're already in a crisis concerning the family and the issues concerning the family breaking up, not being promoted. We're in a crisis economically and culturally we're in a crisis. And until we wake up and realise what a crisis we're in, then I'm afraid things are only going to get worse. And there'll come a day, and history repeats itself, when the Roman Empire fell, the hordes came in, and they took over the Roman Empire in the West. When the, West, when the Roman Empire collapsed. And what we're seeing at the moment is the collapse of the West. And one day, just as Rome was taken over, the West will be taken over. The savages will arrive and they will be at the gates and they will overrun us. What we're witnessing at the present time is the final collapse and the final crumbling of Western civilization. And my friends, if you do not make a stand right now there will be no hope there not only needs to be a spiritual revival by the preachers of this land who preach the word of god there not only has to be a spiritual revival within the church there not only has to be an intellectual revival where the thinkers of this land return to christian roots and theology but there also needs to be a political revival where politicians begin to wake up and realise that the direction where we've been going for the last 60, 70 years is a direction that is leading to cultural death. You've been warned. Time and time again, you've been warned. Time and time again, we've warned you. Time and time again, we've told you. If you continue with this kind of mandate of cultural revolution in our country, where you continually ram political correctness down people's throats and not allow free speech, then you will throw away the Christ not only the throw away the Christian heritage, but you will throw away the nation. And the nation will go down the path. You will move from democracy and we are moving fast towards a fascist state. These students will grow in number. By the year there will be thousands of these kinds of students and they will hunt down Christians in the universities and they will throw out the Christians from the university campuses and it will not only spill out onto the university campuses, Christians will be thrown out of colleges, they'll be thrown out of schools and they'll not only be thrown out, they'll be punched and they'll be kicked. That's where this is going in the next 10 years if this continues to grow and fester like a cancer in our nation. Because you're allowing the mob to rule. You're allowing ideologies to be gods. 
Marxist ideology, political correctness ideology. There's nothing more to be said. Here's a Oxford College, Oxford, where C.S. Lewis was, Oxford, where J.R. Tolkien was, Oxford, where many, many Christians, such as Wycliffe was. Many great theologians have been to Oxford and studied at Oxford. Uh, J.I. Packer is one. And yet this college, reckless, recklessly, throwing away not only Christian heritage but also seeking to destroy the Christian religion and Christian faith within the campus. Not able to debate and argue the case. This, this young man, Freddie Potts, What kind of an intellectual student is he that he cannot win his argument through debate and logic and reason, but has to enforce his fascist agenda upon the college? I've said my words, and what I've said is serious stuff. Take it or leave it. You can say it's over the top. You can say uh, what I'm saying is far, far over the top. One of the theologians that I have read a lot, and I've read his life in intricate detail and in depth, is Dietrich... Uh, Sorry, uh, yeah, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And in the 1930s, he saw the Nazis arising and he started to warn the nation about it and they took no notice. And it started early on where Jews were, were named in a horrible way given derogatory marks about the Jewish people and then it began to ostracize Jewish people from public life and then it began to have violence towards the Jewish people and that's what this situation here is history repeating itself if this is not stamped out not only just at Oxford, but in the university campuses around the country, then these self-appointed guardians of morality who claim to be speaking about freedom when in actual fact they're just, they're just Marxist fascists dressed up in political correct garb. If this is not stamped out within our nation rapidly, then we're on the road to a state of fascism in, in the next 10 years. It means that students on college campuses, it means uh, lecturers, academics, it means intellectuals in the public sphere, need to realise that, need to realise that You take on fascism by logic, reason and evidence and argument and debate. These student bodies that are like this need to be challenged in debate, academic debate and discussion. And if they refuse to have academic and debate and discussion then they should be ignored. If they can't defend their position with reason and evidence, then all they're doing is being fascist and bullies. But it requires a backlash in the next few years to turn things around by challenging these universities and student bodies to debate. 
It requires not only a backlash, it requires people to stand up on all sides, on all political, um, religious and moral sides. It requires a backlash of academics, philosophers, sociologists, psychologists, scientists, politicians, media people, writers, poets, playwrights and um, novelists. It requires a backlash for you to make a stand, a principal stand, for freedom of speech. If you don't defend the right of Christianity to have its freedom within this land, then all the freedom that you are proclaiming is a mirage. And you've led us basically into the Dark Ages. And I, I, I believe that we are actually in the Dark Ages. I believe that, as, as Dr. Wilson, the historian who wrote in the Daily Mail, he wrote in the Daily Mail that we are actually in the Dark Ages where freedom of speech has been taken away. So unless you make a stand now, a principled stand now, with the long-term objective of challenging the forces of darkness who would take away freedom of speech, then, welcome to the age of darkness. Welcome to the Dark Ages. It doesn't matter how much you proclaim gay people are free. It doesn't matter how much you proclaim uh, we have uh, secular space. What, what you have actually done is you've taken us into the Dark Ages. Those are my thoughts, anyway. I, 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 I take a principal stand against any group, any organisation that would seek to take away freedom of speech. I, I, I may not agree with you. I may not agree with you. Alright? I may not agree with you. But I will die defending your freedom of speech. That is me. I will die defending your freedom of speech. I might not agree with you, I might not like your views, but I will die defending your freedom of speech. And unless there is that kind of spirit within the universities, within the media, and when it, within the Western democracy, we're finished. It's all over. Okay? God bless you.